Church is two miles on this on page right down the road. Yeah. We hadn't got back in there yet, but that's what we are. Renovations. Oh, uh, he's one of the uh, people working right now for the Come on, everybody, please take your seats. 
website and download his picture, you can't. He's got it blocked. It is a very enticing, beautiful, beatific photograph. Wow. And yet when I tried when I tried to download it and put it into our newsletter, uh, I was I was lucky that it didn't, you know, Shit, me to some other Llewellyn McGee somewhere else on the planet. And I was I was tempted to use that picture in any event. Okay. Uh, uh, our next presenter comes to us with uh, a, a great deal of experience in the area of PTSD uh, uh, from his uh, career in the military, uh, as well as his work with the uh, Florissant and Police Department as a chaplain. Um, we are delighted to have uh, Reverend Doctor Professor Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! If they can call Jesus Rabbi, we can call anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it means teacher. That's all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Llewellyn, for being with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Where are you? Now, I have to give a disclaimer at the beginning. Um, I'm a pastor. And normally in the African-American tradition, when a pastor or preacher specifically says something, if there is silence, he may go longer. And if there is feedback, I may get too excited, so somebody may have to calm me down. Amen. But I appreciate it. You're getting me going already. <laughs> so today, I am very honored to be with you and uh, asked by Rabbi Shook to come in and present on PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I'm honored to do that because I've spent a life researching it from a spiritual health perspective. And I say that because I, I, I think about the first presentation, and most of this is what we're going to get in the public, is they're going to talk about a physical health care, what's the psychological, but where is the research that begins to say from a spiritual health care perspective? We are chaplains, are we not? Yes, sir. And so because we are chaplains, my research began 23 years ago. Um, when I became a chaplain, I spent 31 years in the military, just retired um, last January. In fact, two days ago was the day I retired, the, the, the 20th of January. So I'm done Pretty and sure. free. No. <laughs> and so 31 years in, thank you, but 23 years as a chaplain. And when I first came in to the chaplain corps, uh, Father Weber was in there with me too. Uh, we have a lot of people who have been in the military, but he was a chaplain, retired colonel. Um, I have to ask a question this, because a chaplain in the military, which is the model that I'm showing you today, is what I developed over 23 years, taught it to hundreds of people, and I have uh, one of my students, Sheila Hamilton, Chaplain Hamilton, here with me today, who's gone through all of the phases of the training to make sure you understand that what you're doing is specific to you as a chaplain. And to those who are here who are not chaplains, I think you will be um, enlightened by the information that you received in the hour that I, that I had. Um, the first question I asked to begin this was, chaplains I knew took care of everybody in their unit. Not based on my religion, not based on my denomination. So my question, 
was, how am I going to provide a consistent amount of care to them as if they had no, they were not in my same denomination? How do I do that? I researched, I researched, I researched, and found no model to do so. And we had been chaplains for forever. The chapel had been in existence since uh, 1776. So where's the model? So I started doing things that you don't do in the military is ask questions. In the military, you salute, you drive on. But I have to ask the question because I did not understand that if I'm going to provide care to chaplain peoples, I cannot be partial or biased to him over somebody else in my unit, whether they are in my denomination, whether they are agnostic, or whether they were atheists. I have to take care of everyone in my unit with a standard of care, what they say in the healthcare field, you don't like to use the term, but we need to use the term, a standard of care to make sure we are accountable and responsible for the care that we provide. Can I get that amen? Amen. amen? So that began 23 years ago, and so um, two masters degree later, one, a master of divinity, um, a, a master's of counseling, a specializing in marriage, family, and child therapy from Webster University, a doctorate in pastoral counseling, um, becoming an EMT, um, did it in Iraq, LSA Anaconda, Balad Air Base, where I went through the Trauma One Center there in Balad as an EMT on the physical side, along with the mental side, I put together a holistic model, that's the word, a holistic model by which you can provide care across the continuum of care. How many of you have heard the term continuum of care? Yes, sir. It's a whole bunch of y'all, okay? So we have to fit into that continuum of care. Hospitals, they have a whole holistic team to take care of people who are having problems. And a chaplain is a part of that team. Amen. Amen. Okay? But if you do not know what you're doing or have a method, I'm a Methodist, have a method to what you're doing, then it's, it's sometimes it can become clouded because we don't want to be in uh, the uh, polite uh, arena what he's doing in mental health. We have to be in our arena. You have to know what you are doing. And that has been the search for 23 years. Books, yes. Manuals, yes. I am the first full-time chaplain in the nation to work under a governor, and that governor was 14 years ago. I didn't just retire. And now every state under their governor has a full-time chaplain, and many states have multiple chaplains. And so they're using bits and pieces of this. They didn't decide to use my model of a training center to train them in the nation, but they got a better concept. They used the Missouri model of how you do chaplain care under a governor. How many of you know that the National Guard, our commander in chief, in this, in this sense I'm giving now, works for the governor? Did y'all know that or not know that? The National Guard, our mission, is to the state, which is the governor's our commander chief. Mm -hmm. And the only time that you can go beyond um, that uh, declaration of the governor is when we are deployed to go and do federal deployment to a war zone. So that's why you see all the things with passing out water in Flint, Michigan, whatever else. The National Guard is there, and, and so we're going to the governor. The president did not mobilize them, okay? So I give that because the model I created, created used the National Guard as a model for the community. Mm. So the community is our departments in the many various, I think, plus 50 um, municipalities in the St. Louis County. <laughs> and I live in Florida, and, and Dr. Triplett, Theo Triplett, who's here, who's the chaplain, he recommended me, thank you, Dr. Triplett, to say, hey, I want him to be a chaplain with the Folsom Police Department, Met, 
Chief Lowry from two and a half years ago. That's how long it took me to process out of the military, really, uh, my medical stuff. But now, some of the questions that I heard you say is, to address it kind of to the point, uh, Rabbi Shook, is that I've been talking to them for two and a half years, and in the last four months, the, we got a new uh, role captain. Okay, Captain Godfrey, Vince Godfrey. Anybody know Captain Godfrey? Okay, and so we've been talking like we've become bosom buddies. But we talk about taking care of his officers on the streets. So when I'm sharing my story, he said, Chaplain, this, this is too good. We, 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 we cannot <laughs> not just have you doing ride along. I said, ride along is great. He said, no, we got to get to all of my officers. Hmm. And then I got some feedback, heard some feedback, Somebody, I told the uh, 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 Officer Dehart, they got twin brothers the other day, Officer Dehart, Sergeant over the communications, said, man, I talked to the chief, and the chief said, we don't know how we're going to do that because I don't want to feel guilty of pulling the officers off the road to get my training, okay? So I didn't want to do that. So uh, Captain Godfrey said, because they're my officers, I'm going to put it past the chief first. But what we're going to do is when they get off of their shift, they're going to have a mandatory training of dealing with stress. Because all the stuff you're talking about, they don't even realize they're having stress. To your question that you brought up. So he's going to force them to go through this. And he said, I think it's going to be better because when you share your story, stories, they're going to open up. And what I found in the ride-alongs, Somebody said, well, Chaplain, you don't mind just going on a ride along and it's boring? <laughs> I said, no. He said, why not? Go, you go to afternoon shift and, and, and really, um, it gets to the point where you'll be so busy. I said, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want to talk to you, find out who, who, what's up about you. Yeah. Yesterday, the officer already did a ride along, three and a half, three, three and a half hour ride along. Go send him my report. So I'm doing that. The, the brother, you don't send it to me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he talked about football and talked about, about the Rams, and I really got into his life. Mm. Okay? And so I told him, that the officer who asked me, I says, I love finding out my officers because when you know I'm around, we call it in the military the, 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 the um, Ministry of Presence. When you know I'm around and I care for you because I'm hanging out with you, you will be more apt <laughs> to call me when you go through some, some serious stuff. Mm. Then when uh, Captain Godfrey, Captain G, I called him, when he started having meetings and we all together, and I'm sharing my story, I'm being vulnerable, I'm being transparent, then maybe they can open up. Yeah. And even if they don't say anything, I know what's gonna happen, they gonna get back home like, man, I just, he was saying stuff that happened to him, but I had the same thing. Get it? Okay, y'all looking at y'all serious to be like, okay, all right. So, not to belabor the point. So, Rabbi Shook talked about who I am a little bit, and my numbers came, I changed over from here, but I have three exactly, and you have a blank piece of paper in front of you. And I noticed during the on previous presentation, many people were not writing. So I struggled with should I give you a whole presentation with everything written out for you? Or have you do muscle memory? Right. You get it later. All right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about these four things. And it's a one, 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 two, but it's four things. <laughs> and so I want you to use one piece of paper to talk about two and just write the, those points I made there and turn on the back and have that, and then this is gonna be the whole presentation. And at the end of this presentation, we're gonna have a test. Say it, gave somebody anxiety, okay? <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna discuss is understanding the caregiver. Yeah, understanding the caregiver and the standard of care needed. Yeah, understanding the caregiver and the standard of care needed. So that's on the top of the page right there. And down in the middle of the page, to understand post-traumatic stress disorder from a spiritual health perspective, okay? So I want you to put one top 
That first question, two in the middle, so we can leave area to right, and eternal, flip it over. Number three is going to be to understand the continuum of care, and then in the middle of that back page, to validate the learning objectives which we have talked about here, to summarize the objectives. So I'll give you a minute and 15 seconds to write down these objectives. And as simple as that, and something happens when you are writing and processing on the spot that will help you remember it. Because even if you take the piece of paper and throw it away, I believe that you, you, you will retain most of what I'm going to talk about. Let me say secondly that many times we can use a lot of terms that people do not relate to. And I got a master's after a doctorate in um, counseling, marriage family child therapy and secular counseling because I did not want to go and have a conversation with mental health people or physicians or whoever and they say, well, you're just a, you are just a chaplain, you're just a pastor and you don't know what you're talking about. So somebody said that's a long route, you know, route to get to that point, but I did that for that purpose. So if I want to give all the terms, I would do that. But at this point, because our officers and community needs us, I gotta be bring it down to in one hour to make sure you understand the information of providing care as a child. Okay? And so what I'm trying to do is break down 23 years of research and practice into one hour, and then I got less than an hour because I got up at, uh, at uh, 10.35. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. Hopefully the white body will go to sleep, okay? That's a lot of stuff on a resume. So I have to uh, whittle down my resume from about four or five pages. They say don't go over two pages, but I cannot uh, ignore what I have done, okay? But all of this started in 1993. My wife and I lost the first of five babies to miscarriage, mm -hmm. okay? And as in the first presentation, I felt helpless to help my wife because of all these babies. And one of the, I had twins lost in the pregnancy on one of them, I was in Oakland, California, and I had just got ordained as a, 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 in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and two days later, my wife was in the hospital, losing one of the twins. A couple of days later, lost the other baby. Had a supervisor who was over my wife, my wife, has two masters, she's a pastor right down the road to, on, on page, but the church that I started, she pastors now. When I went to Iraq, she pastored the church and I'm her worship leader now, my son, and people I put around him, uh, or the worship team. But they were so wanting to have information that she was producing, because she's an educator, also has been a professor, that after losing babies, which they, we've notified them, they want to know when were they getting the presentation for their summer program. We just lost two babies. And they 